love not only introducing you to new plants, but also taking a deep dive into plants that we commonly see but may not know a lot about. In today's video, I'm going to talk all about the care and maintenance of this gorgeous trailing plant genus, the Tradescantia. Welcome to my channel. I'm Cece with One Green Pea. I make videos to educate and inspire you to live your plantiest life. Before you go today, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can spread the plant love to more people just like you. Today's Meet the Plant episode is all about one of my favorite trailing plants, the Tradescantia. If you're drawn to fancy foliage or an easy care plant, then this one is for you. Today, I'm going to give you my top tips to keep this plant healthy and vibrant and stick around to the end for an absolutely necessary maintenance step that you need to be prepared to do to keep your Tradescantia looking full and happy. The Tradescantia has many common names, but as is my norm, I prefer to go by the Latin botanical name of Tradescantia. As with so many plants, the common names can be abrasive or even outright offensive. So let's stick with Tradescantia. And besides, it's fun to say. The Tradescantia comes in many, many different varieties. There are different colors, pinks as well as purples, greens, and some of them are so similar they're actually really difficult to tell apart. This one is the Tradescantia zebrina. The Tradescantia prefers bright, indirect light. I have mine hanging in between an east-facing and a south-facing window, and it seems to be rather happy there. Now, one thing that is important, if you have the plant hanging, that it's not hanging too high, so there's no light getting to the crown. I'll talk in um, just a moment about some of the problems that come up with the Tradescantia, and not getting enough light to um, the entirety of the plant is going to be one of them. The Tradescantia likes um, a well-draining average soil mix. Now it doesn't like to dry completely out. So if your soil mix is too quick drying, too airy, then you're gonna be watering a lot. So you wanna find just a nice balance there. As far as watering goes, you don't want it to dry completely out, but it doesn't want to stay soggy either. So um, watering when the soil is one to two knuckles down, it's dry one to two knuckles down, that's a good rule of finger for that. As far as temperature goes, um, average household temperature is perfectly acceptable to the Tradescantia. It's also happy in your normal um, humidity level in your home as well. I mean, it's never going to hate extra humidity, but you don't have to worry too much about this one. The Tradescantia is a fast grower, so does like some fertilizer. I fertilize mine regularly with a liquid fertilizer. So every time I water, I give a very, very, very diluted serving of my fertilizer. And I will put the name of my fertilizer down in um, my caption, just so you know, because it isn't really easy one to use. Because the Tradescantia is such a fast grower, it's also really easy to propagate. My preferred method of propagation is to just take a cutting, six inch cutting, uh, making sure that you have several leaf nodes. You'd pop those leaves off, place it in water, and then soon enough, you're going to have root growth. This is one that I cut maybe two or three weeks ago. Uh, this one, is not quite to the same level. You can see that there's a tiny bit of root growth starting, but not quite there. So I'll just keep that one in water a little longer. 
Another method for propagating or filling in your pot is to simply take a vine, lay it across the soil surface, so still attached, pin it down with a bobby pin and the leaf nodes that are nearest or touching the soil will grow roots. Now that's going to take a little bit longer and you need more soil surface, so a larger pot in order to do that. I prefer the water propagation method. The most common concerns that arise with the Tradescantia are related to the leaves. Now, sometimes the leaves start to fade out. Now that could be caused by a lack of light, but it could also just be a normal part of the aging plant. That is what happens to the older leaves. So looking at where the leaves are fading is important. If they are fading at the ends, then you know the plant's not getting enough light. It, if they're a little closer to uh, the, the root of the plant, the base of the plant, then it could just simply be aging. Now, the leaves also have a tendency to fall off. That again could be because of just a normal part of aging that happens at the crown of the plant. But also, if you allow the plant to dry completely out, then the plant gets a little annoyed and starts dropping leaves. So that is something to watch out for. And then again, like I said, it really doesn't like to be touched. And uh, even through just watering, regular watering, you might bump a stem and break it off. But like I said, propagation is so easy. It's not a problem. And you can simply take uh, that stem. This one right here is just about to pop off. So I'll break him off. I'm just going to put this directly into this little jar of water. So I'll show you. I'll just remove the bottom leaf. I've got a couple of leaf nodes. I'm going to place that right in my jar of water. Okay, so now that essential maintenance task that I told you at the beginning, you have to be prepared to do to keep your Traviscantia vibrant and full. Here it is. You have to be prepared to trim off and uh, propagate the oldest stems. And see, just by lifting this, <laughs> I've already snapped this stem again. I was going to use my clippers, but it just simply broke off. And so I have right here a really long vine. It's healthy, but as you can see, there it's lacking leaves um, until all the way down here. And so in order to make this plant look a little more vibrant here at the crown, I am going to cut these off and put them in water. And when they're rooted, I'm going to repot them in so that I just continue to create more leaves right here. So the plant looks fuller. Because if you just look at an older plant, you can see that it begins to look a little leggy. Now this growth down here, leaves are beautiful. The plant is actually very healthy. This is normal. And I think that's um, a common misunderstanding of the plant, that people think that perhaps that means the plant is not doing well. This is just something you have to be prepared to do with the Tradescantia. And remember, when you are putting your newly rooted uh, cuttings back into the soil. You have to be sure to keep the soil extra uh, moist. So watering every couple of days, make sure it's draining well. It's not sitting, it's not sitting in water, but these guys are going to be used to being in water. And so transitioning them into dry soil is going to make it more difficult for them to live. So that is the essential um, task, maintenance task, that you're going to have to be prepared to do. I'm going to do it with this one. I'm actually going to cut off a few. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you just hard cut the entire plant. That's gonna be a huge stressor, especially as we're moving into a little bit of a slower growth season for uh, the plant. But I would probably take another vine or two, cut them back, root them in water when they are fully rooted. So meaning I've got two to three inches of those nice wispy uh, roots that I'm gonna 
poke a little hole, put the, the stem in. Remember, the stems are really delicate, so don't just try to poke the stem into the soil. Make a little hole with, um, say, a chopstick and place it in, pat soil around it, water it well, and then keep it in a place where you are going to be seeing it so you can keep that soil, especially the top of the soil, moist. Thank you for watching my video all about the gorgeous Tradescantia. I hope that this was helpful in uh, keeping your own Tradescantia alive or maybe inspired you to bring one into your home. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. The more activity I get on my videos, the more my message gets spread out to a broader plant community. As always, my plant friends, let's keep growing together a greener world.